A somber procession today for one of two fallen NYPD officers killed in the line of duty. Hundreds of law enforcement lined the streets of New York as Officer Jason Rivera's body was moved to a church. Rivera and his partner, Officer Wilbert Mora, were shot while responding to a domestic violence call. A funeral for Officer Mora is expected next week. And through this tragedy, we are now learning about a decision that Officer Mora made before his death. The 27-year-old is an organ donor, and now his organs have saved the lives of five other people. A selfless and heroic act that we all are asked when we get our driver's license. For people on that waiting list with thousands of others in front of them, it can often take months or even years before they get that call that an organ is ready and could save their life. Roxanne Watson knows that feeling very well. She is an organ transplant recipient herself. She uh, is surviving because of someone else's gift of a heart. Uh, Roxanne, I appreciate you coming on tonight. I know this is a difficult mm -hmm. subject to talk about, especially in light yep. of this brave officer killed. But uh, yeah, turning, this, turning this pain into something positive is something I know you do very well. So I want to first mm -hmm. talk about you and your heart and how you're doing and when you received it. Um, I'm doing fine. <laughs> I received my heart in 20, July 16th, 2010. Mm. And when from you the hear United that. United States Coast Guard serviceman. Oh, tell me more about him. Oh, it's Michael. I have him. I carry him every place I go. Here he is. <laughs> what happened That's to Michael? Michael? Michael had a motorcycle accident. He was on his, he had just left his family from having dinner on Sunday night and he was on his way back to the base and he had a motorcycle uh, accident on the George Washington Bridge, unfortunately. Mm. How he long was taken. I'm sorry, go he, ahead. I would say he, he was taken to Harlem Hospital and uh, a day or so later it was determined that, you know, his family determined that he wasn't gonna make it and they decided to go ahead and donate his organs. Roxanne, how long had you been waiting for a heart? Uh, two years. Two years. And 104, 104 days in the hospital, 78 waiting for the heart. That was tough. That was the toughest part. You're laying there and you're dying and you're hoping that somebody comes to save you. That's who, basically what you do. Who delivered the news to you that you had a heart? My transplant coordinator actually did. And uh, she told me and I didn't believe her. And then she told my son and then my son came and told me and then I believed it. Mm. Cause I had been through dry runs before that. So I had been through three before that, three offers mm. and they all fell through for different reasons. So by the time they came with the fourth offer, I was like, yeah, whatever. I really was at that point. Mm. I was 95 pounds in deep trouble. Couldn't walk, couldn't eat. I was on my last leg, literally. That's why I had to stay in the hospital. That young man's decision saved your life and, and yes. just as Officer Mora did. When you Absolutely. heard that he was an organ donor and uh, his Joy. gift of life saved five other people, um, how does that make you feel? It just was joy, it really was, because here's somebody who served New York City in a really tough job and lost his life at such a young age. Uh, my aunt actually worked in the precinct that he she had worked in that precinct for 35 years. Our family is a law enforcement family. My son's getting ready to go into the police academy for training in six weeks. I mean, this one hits us on a lot of ways. He saved five people, my donor saved five people. Mm -hmm. It was just so many things about this that, you know, hit me in the heart, literally. And just to see, you know, see the honor already before we even get to the funeral. You know, just to see the way they are honoring him in the city with the motorcades and, and all the attention that he deserved because he's a hero. Organ donors are heroes. That's all it is to it. And he's a hero over and over. And his passing is not only going to save those five people, but it's going to save thousands of others because people are motivated now to go ahead 
and do exactly what he did, sign up to be an organ donor. And Roxanne, that is what you're doing. You are motivating people to, to check that box uh, when asked yeah. the question, will you be an organ donor? Um, I know that you have a pitch to people, but I wonder what is the biggest misconception or what is, what is the biggest reason that people choose not to, that you, you convince otherwise? The biggest misconception that I find in the work that I do is uh, people believe that because they're organ donor, because they sign up or they put it on their license, that the medical professionals in emergency are not going to save them because they're organ donors. I mean, that's the thing I hear at almost every table that I have, without exception. The two entities are completely different. The people that try to save your life are separate from the transplant people. They're not even, you know, with Live On New York, they're not even uh, notified until a person is declared dead. So there's no, you know, there's no mix up. The hospital has nothing to gain by not saving you. That's their job to save you. And of course, they absolutely want to save you. And the people on the other end, you know, they're just notified and, that, and that's it. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest misconception. Well, the other thing is you're never too old to be an organ donor. Oh, no. No, nope. 93-year-old man last summer saved people. No, nope. age has nothing to do with it. It's totally the condition of the organs. Mm. Roxanne, uh, my, my grandfather on my mom's side was the recipient of a heart transplant in 1988. He died in 2004, wow. but he lived 16 years uh, thanks to the gift of someone else's heart. He lived long enough to know that I was going to have his first great grandbaby. So this is something very important to me uh, to spread the message. And I've also uh, had the pleasure of witnessing a woman who lost her daughter and then met mm -hmm. the recipient of her daughter's heart. I was there that day oh, doing yes. a story and she listened through a stethoscope of, of her I, daughter's I know heart I know that beating well. in someone else's <laughs> chest. So the, I know that well. Oh, the moment for you to meet your, uh, your donor's family, what was that moment yes. like? It was amazing because it was a total surprise to me. Uh, Oprah Winfrey's people had got in touch with me and asked me if I would come on the show and uh, talk about organ donation, especially in the minority community, because we were trying to make sure that more minorities sign up. And that's the roost, or that's what I thought I was going to do. So I'm excited, I'm gonna be on Oprah, and you know, Dr. Phil was there, and Dr. Oz, and uh, Susie Orman, and Gail King, everybody was there. It was just amazing. And right in the middle of, of my segment, uh, I think, it was Gail King who said, we have a surprise for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said, okay. <laughs> and I'm thinking, am I gonna get a car? <laughs> <laughs> I might've thought the same thing too. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, I was gonna get a car. <laughs> and uh, the, I was given that picture, the picture I just showed you. That was my first gift. And as soon as I saw it, I knew it was my donor. It's just something in my heart said, that's my donor. And obviously we all cried and we yeah. and then we went to commercial, then we came back from a commercial and uh, they told me, well, we have another surprise for you. And I'm like, I'm a heart patient, don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. And uh, the door of the studio opened and walked uh, the representative from Live On New York uh, and right behind her were all of his family his mom, his dad, his three sisters. He was the oldest and the only boy. His three sisters were there and his aunt and his grandmother. I still, like right now, I'm getting goosebumps. I still, it was probably one of the most beautiful days of my life. It really was a beautiful thing to meet those people. It wasn't until later that we actually got a thesoscope and uh, when we were doing another TV uh, right. show that uh, I was able to, have the family listen to his heart. It's a pretty special moment. Roxanne, oh, absolutely. your donor is a hero, but you are a hero absolutely. in my eyes as well. Thank, Thank you, you for your message. Thank you for your advocacy. And I, I, it's no coincidence, I'm wearing red today. Uh, February is Heart this Health is. Month. Go so uh, red. my best to you, um, all the Thank best you. health, and, and thanks for sharing some of your journey with us tonight. <laughs> And we just want to say thank you to the Mora family for giving that gift and uh, for Live On New York for handling the whole thing so beautifully. Mm. Amen. Roxanne, take thank care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.